What on earth happened? Well, what's up, guys? It's Cody here, and today we're playing Scrap Mechanic, a game all about using switches, engines, moving parts, and all sorts of other things to create the machines of your dreams. And I have a, a few machines to show you today, but before we get into that, let me explain a few of the different components we have for building in Scrap Mechanic. First up, we have the bearing. The bearing is a massively important part of Scrap Mechanic because it is a point around which blocks can rotate. The bearing, by default, just rotates blocks according to gravity, but if we hook it up, if we wire it up to, say, a driver's seat, we can rotate these bearings using the left and right movement keys, as you can see. If instead we want to activate this bearing through, if instead we want to rotate this bearing through the forwards and backwards movement keys, we can instead connect it to an engine, let's turn the power up a little bit, and connect that engine to the driver's seat. So the driver's seat will activate engines, thrusters, that sort of thing, through the forwards and backwards movement keys, and it will rotate bearings through the left and right movement keys. But the driver's seat at first glance would appear to have a few limitations. For instance, how would I activate a thruster through the left or right movement keys? This sort of thing would come in handy for a few things such as my vehicle which I'm going to get into detail later on. But for now, how would we approach this situation? Well, I have my own solution here. If we take a look, if I press left or right it will rotate these two bearings and the sensors will pick up the lines of blocks in front of them which will then activate thrusters. So if we take a brief look at the wiring, this sensor is connected to that thruster, this sensor is connected to that thruster, and so on. So sensors are something that can be activated by just about anything being in front of them, including blocks connected to their own structure through bearings. For the forwards and backwards thrusters, it's the same basic thing, but they are activated instead by an engine rather than the left and right movement keys. So this sort of system could be very useful for a variety of things, but if you're not quite sure about how to build it, don't worry, I'll walk you through it right now. Let's get started. We have here a platform, 10 blocks wide, 12 blocks long, and our driver's seat and thrusters have already been placed down. As you can see, nothing is wired up yet, and we're ready to begin. Start by placing down two blocks here, here, and here. Then remove these blocks here. You can see that? Alright. Now place a bearing here and here, and a line of three of these blocks here and here. I should note that it doesn't matter which blocks you use, but I use these blocks because it's easier to keep track of which part is which. Now place blocks here, and uh, here, and there. Grab some sensors and place them here, and... Uh, hang on, I've got this here. Now we build a ceiling or a roof over our module, and it is completed. Now we just have to wire it up. So, connect the driver's seat to these two bearings, and they're rotating. When they rotate up here, the sensors are activated, so we need to connect them. Connect that one to that thruster, and this one to that thruster. And that's our first module done. Now we simply mirror this on the other side. Ooh. 
And now we wire these up to a motor. Uh, sorry, an engine. To this one here. And this one here. And then we connect the driver's seat to the engine. I should note that it's probably a good idea to connect the driver's seat to the engine before connecting the engine to anything to make sure the engine doesn't turn the bearings on its own because if you get it wrong you might have your car running off on you. You don't really want that. So just remember to connect the driver's seat to the engine first. Now we are controlling these two bearings just fine. This is forwards, this is backwards. So. This will connect to that bearing, and this to that thruster. Now we have our complete thruster. We have our directional splitter 100% complete. But what is the practical use of this system? What can we build with it? Well, here's something I made earlier. It's called the Rocket Trolley, and it uses these directional splitters along with some thrusters to move you in exactly the direction you want to go. Underneath the main part of the vehicle, we have four sets of wheels on casters. The casters allow the wheels to adjust to face in the direction you're moving, allowing for maximum precision as you drive. This thing is also quite a lot of fun to drive around, although a little bit hard at times because you can't really turn it. Well, that's about it. We have learned how to create directional splitters. We have taken a ride in the rocket trolley, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at this, because it really deserves an episode of its own. See you then.